once you have chosen to believe in something, can you even really change your mind anymore? You can, but then that means that you have to break that belief. Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you're all well. It's the evening and it's kind of stormy outside. I just took a day off work. I made sure my classes were being taught by a teacher whom I trust. She's great. So that I could welcome two of my French relatives and kind of show them through my Amsterdam. And it was great, even though it was really rainy, really windy. Anyway, I'm here in the evening with Doggy on the couch. And I want to cozily talk to you again about my spirituality and how my approach to it, my views on things have evolved since I started this tarot channel. Because I realized the other day how incredibly, even physically relaxing it can feel to just let yourself believe in something. It, it's the cliche, dare to believe, right? The hallmark card, etc. But there's some real power in there. It's almost like maybe bad example, I don't know. But um, <laughs> for instance, trying so incredibly hard to be vegan, right? I've been vegan for a, a short amount of time. I've been vegetarian for quite a while. And both those things did not work out fully. Um, everybody is different. Everybody and everybody reacts differently to things, right? So it's not just about your belief system or what you want to fight for. It's also what actually you experience works for you and is actually good for you. Because I believe a vegan diet isn't good for everybody, right? I mean, you're allowed absolutely no worries to disagree, but I think everybody is different again. And it's kind of the craft and tarot and just the whole of individual spirituality is very similar to trying so hard to be vegan, even though you've already realized that it's not doing you any good or not giving you what you were hoping to receive, like, you know, all the things that are um, promised, like having a lot of energy, not needing to eat as often because it's very satisfying. I never experienced those things. So trying to be vegan when all you want to do is just relax at the dinner table and just eat with your family. Eat Christmas dinner. Eat Thanksgiving dinner. I don't care. Maybe witches don't really love Thanksgiving, you know? But we love the food. I think I said it. Relax at the family table and just enjoy the moment, enjoy the people, enjoy the food, relax, instead of having to worry about, is this made with eggs? Is there dairy in this? You know what I mean? So, <laughs> um, I am experiencing, or have been experiencing, and I've been quiet about this, something very similar when it comes to overall spirituality, but of course I talk about tarot on YouTube, I talk about witchcraft on Patreon, mostly. Um, how I am very cerebral about those things and I want them to make sense, I still have that urge to make things make sense. I don't just blatantly believe. That's not how I work, right? Also, for instance, just to put it out there, I am extremely mistrustful of the, or distrustful, I don't know, of the government. <laughs> and that is not a joke, guys. For real, I question everything. But it does come at a price. It comes at that price where you are unable to actually believe. You are at some point unable to actually do the working that you wanted to do or have faith in the reading that you just gave yourself, you know? 
So I will never stop asking the right questions. Also, that is the entity that I work with that I have found. That is the way she works, for sure. That is the way I work. But also, I just want to relax into just the the powerful goodness that, uh, yeah, this path, right? This spiritual side of me um, is giving me or is trying so hard to give me. All I need to do is just relax into it and just let go a little bit. So I need to let myself believe. And that's what this video is about. As I said, I'm very cerebral. I call it tarot-brained, right? Because I think, for instance, when we're talking about tarot versus oracle cards, tarot has a system. And of course you could read it intuitively. I do too. But I love having that foundation that came from the books and your understanding of what you read and your experiential knowledge. All of those things, I check into the facts box. But again, I do facts because the meaning of facts have been changed in the last couple of years, in my opinion. <laughs> and on the other side, we have the oracle cards. You know, I'm not bashing oracle. <laughs> no, hell no. Oracle can be wonderful, can be great. But usually there is no system, right? I know some decks come with systems, but I'm talking about it's, it's a little there's a little less of that structure that you can count on. So there is less, in my opinion, figuring out. There's less of that process of trying to figure out what the message is, what the cards are trying to tell you. In tarot, you can, you can be fully atheist. You can be, you know, um, all you have to believe in to make the tarot work anytime is to believe that you get the cards that you need at the moment. So basically, synchronicity. And is that really a spiritual belief? You know, it's up for debate, I guess. But oracle cards, you know, it's a little, yeah, as I said, less structured. It's a little more airy. It's a little just flowy. There's less of that, in my experience, questioning, you know, why did I get that specific card? I, I guess I get less with Oracle cards. It's just my experience. As you know, I do have more Oracle decks and I work with tarot way more than with Oracle. I think Oracle cards, I get less this experience where I feel I need to really sit down and think and figure out why I got that specific card for that specific question or that specific moment, even without asking a question. With tarot, often, um, I mean, I must say, often the readings just make sense, right? Because you recognize your situation in there, but sometimes you get cards where you think, what? I did not see that coming, what do you mean? And you almost kind of get offended, right? Even if it's you giving yourself the reading, those are the, the treasure, readings those are the best readings because that's when you get to do a bit of that shadow work that us tarot readers love talking about including myself i know an oracle uh, it's just i guess it's less complicated and i know again plenty of people read tarot a little less complicated maybe than i am uh, you know, explaining right now, of course, in a very kind of short explanation, but um, yeah, that is the, the big difference. And I do consider myself more tarot brained because I'm always trying to figure things out and think, why is this happening? How does this work? I have, I think, at least one, <laughs> probably three videos or more because it's all intertwined, it's all woven in there. Uh, I talk about in my videos, how does the tarot work? Because I don't really expect to find the answer, but I, the quest is just always there, it's just always present. Also, I definitely found myself in this 
saying, which comes from chaos magic, which is once you believe in something, you kind of chain yourself to something. So you become like a stone, you become a rock and it doesn't move. When you believe, you become imprisoned. It's just like Crowley's in the Toth deck, the Ten of Wands, which is oppression, Lord of Oppression. You've went through the whole wands, fire, creativity, action, suit, to get to the Ten of Wands, to get to that particular goal. And now that you have it all, now that you've achieved it, you find out that you've actually imprisoned yourself because now you have what you want. You've achieved what you wanted to achieve. You have become what you wanted to become. And now you know that that is actually an imprisonment, that that is sort of a curse. There's another saying, I don't know, it was a famous writer or poet, I don't know, who said something along the lines of, I'm obviously paraphrasing, the greatest curse is to become what you wanted to become. It's actually a blessing to not know what you want to do with your life. That actually makes sense to me, right? Once you admit admit to yourself, or once you present to yourself, <laughs> probably again overanalyzing, but don't we love this stuff? Present to yourself that you believe in something, then what do you do with new information that comes your way, or new thought, or new perspective, a new experience, that can actually change your mind? Once you have chosen to believe in something, can you even really change your mind anymore? You can, but then that means that you have to break that belief. You know, that's much more radical than to just go, I don't have beliefs, I have thoughts. It implies that, or yeah, it means that we are different every day or every moment, and we can change our mind, and we can be very fluid, and we can be very impulsive, and we can just go for what works now. We choose a belief system as a tool. Very chaos magic, I know. But again, it kind of fucks with the brain, because when you work with personified deity, and in my case, it, it's not really deity, it's not really a goddess, that's why I use the word entity, but still, it's personified. How can I not believe in her? Yes, I do believe in her. But does that mean that, oh no, I am now, I have now oppressed myself. I have now imprisoned myself. I am now ten of wands. Is that concerning? It doesn't feel bad. I want to keep my brain working to stay open-minded for new information, for different views to develop, to grow. I don't want to be stuck. This is not the end, okay? This is not end game. <laughs> this story keeps going, it keeps evolving, it keeps going. So I don't want to stop it. I want to actually kind of, if I must say so far, this new path is, is more like a boost, is like this big dam that broke open and it's all now really, all this energy is rushing through. So it's a very positive experience, but it's funny that this, it's very paradoxical almost, right? Um, how this understanding or idea of, I don't have a beliefs, I have thoughts. I needed to break that in order to do something that is right for me. I needed to believe. Does any of this make any sense? To me, it does. I feel like I'm <laughs> finally able to explain what has been going on, put into words. But now I realize also, you know, everybody's brain works differently. So maybe some people are totally lost at this. I don't know. <laughs> All I needed to do is to relax into the magic of it and not just talking about personified deity or any of that stuff. Just the the things I've been doing, you know, the magical practice, the spiritual work, not just with tarot and oracle, not just with cards, but with everything. I went from a strict <laughs> vegan to just relax at the dinner table and enjoy your time with your family kind of thing. That's the feeling I got.
and it might that transition right that example might not be a positive one for everybody but I have in a, to a certain extent experienced that so it kind of like it relaxes just in the core of the body right it not not necessarily here in the shoulder tension it relaxes in the from the chest from the heart it warms the heart and mostly in the gut area that's where it relaxes that's where it's like oof I'm finally now just feeling my way my way through things and having a different approach to things it doesn't start from here it starts from the gut and so therefore I kind of get rid of the notions of this isn't gonna work and sabotaging myself beforehand I eliminate the prejudice of the working that I'm about to do right just a silly example but it can be very potent plenty of magical practitioners do that you can stir in an intention in your morning coffee or tea just that doesn't even take a minute okay maybe it takes a minute already growing up in the Western world we can never be true shamans Khodorovsky said that we can never be true shamans because we have not been brought up with the idea of magic being everything you know um, of, of those core deep rooted ancestor belief systems we've been brought up with very different views of the world and now that there's this spiritual awakening kind of happening we need to relearn all those things but it's really hard because you need to decondition yourself you need to unlearn things before you learn things and so this is why in the core in the belief in your annoying sabotaging uh, what's it called mistrustful am i making up words brain here your skeptical skeptic brain skeptic brain those things can never be fully 100 percent true because we've been brought up with a very different view of the world or might i even say the opposite so we are already starting at a disadvantage and now we need to believe that you can actually stir an intention into your morning coffee but yes yes you can you need to believe in the power within you you need to well you don't need to do anything okay and i'm not gonna tell you what to do this is not what this is about ever but i'm just saying i'm so ready to believe in it i'm so ready to relax into it that doesn't mean i'm gonna start calling myself a priestess anytime soon right or to say okay i'm a shaman now to declare myself as a, a shaman but i am at this point in my practice at this point in my life where I'm not going to let myself care about what others think what others believe because or even even I'm not gonna let myself care about what I think of it <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna ignore those thoughts okay I'm gonna just do it and maybe do the chaos magic thing use the belief as a tool fine by me but I do what works again very chaos magic I know I'm very close to that because it makes sense to me but this again the whole chaos magic that core thing about it i am going to use that as fuel to let myself relax into this craft and it's what i've been doing but now i actually can kind of pinpoint what i'm doing because it's it's been slowly seeping in and now all of a sudden i got this yeah sort of an epiphany that i need to learn these things through experiential knowledge as i call it i talked about this before on my channel but i talked about tarot cards what does a tarot card mean to you 
you pull a tarot card and then you go about your day. You come back to your card at the end of the day and that's when you figure out truly what that card means to you from experience, not from what came out of a book or what someone told you the card means. That is truly linking the card or the deck to your energy. So experiential knowledge. And why it took me so long to do the same with magical practice? Probably my skeptical brain. I can't help it. I will always stay that way, probably. But mm, again, as I said, I'm so ready to um, to relax at, at the dinner table of spiritual treats. So, you know, it's a different perspective. First, do the thing. How does it work? I will always ask that question, even though I, again, don't really expect an answer. But I'm saying right now, I think that I prefer seeing what works from experience and then perhaps figuring out why it worked afterwards instead of, even though I tried stopping myself, always trying to figure out why it's going to work, how it's going to work, even before I start it. I must say, in some cases, that also helps. That you could kind of create a guide of, well, how is that going to work? Oh, well, you kind of see a path between where you are now and where you want to be. And then there's many different technique, techniques of getting there. But you can, you know, you can add all the things that you feel you need because you have this clear vision of how it's going to work. So therefore, for it makes sense that you're going to use that crystal or that you're going to use this herb or this tarot deck or you know what I mean that's very basic but it can create a very practical guide to well basically spell work right or any sort of intention for that it's still good right I still like my approach but it shouldn't be so stiff and so strict I'm really ready to relax into it and I want to know is this something that is in the air right now? Am I alone in this? I would love to hear from you in the comment section. Definitely. And you know, there's this other thing that this whole uh, thing of I'm not going to care about what others think, how however close they are to me. Big thing for me, apparently. That was a little shadow in the corner that I figured out the other day. And big revelation, including myself. I'm not going to care about what I think of what I'm doing. I'm just going to do it <laughs> and then see from experience if it works. And then I can ask the question, how did it work? Right? It makes sense for many people. But as you can see, my brain kind of works, I don't know, like a seesaw. <laughs> it, feels, it feels like it works kind of bouncing back and forth. And I'm trying to make sense of things even before they happened. Uh, maybe the divination curse, I don't know. Uh, what I was trying to say is, of course, this sort of relaxing into it and um, not caring and, I don't know, releasing, it, it, it comes with age. Now, I just turned 36, or as I like to say, 35 for the second time. But the older you get, and I know I'm still young, but still, the older you get, the more you realize that it's you that matters. It's your opinion that matters. It's your experience that matters. You have to love yourself. You have to agree with yourself. You have to live your life. You're not going to live it for anybody else, right? Even if it's the person you love. You're going to live your life the way you want to live it because for you. That obviously doesn't mean that you have to become really selfish or anything like that. I think I'm saying you have to make yourself happy first. And if it makes sense for you, then that truly is all that matters, right? If you're not hurting anybody. Because again, we're talking occult knowledge. We're talking occult practice. That is this too, the highly individual work the secrecy, the thing that it, it's not even just secrecy. It's not even just a cult for the sake of not telling anybody else. It's the highly personalized individual work 
it's nobody's business but yours. That's the big thing. It's nobody's business but yours. And if I choose to share a bit of it with a friend, my partner, you guys, my patrons, right? A client, then that's up to me. And if the other person doesn't like it, that's not going to make me change my ways because I already found that it works. So another person's opinion has no value here, has no business being here. This is truly, and it's so strong, it is the actual realm of the practitioner himself. You know, this doesn't have to be knowledge that goes into books. This is just the craft for you, for you alone. So guys, I also wanted to talk about animism a little bit in this video, but I think it's long enough and I hope it made sense. I'm going to play the game with you because I want to know who made it this far into the video, okay? So the game is, if you made it this far, please comment the word dynamic because I have the Crow's Magic Tarot Ace of Swords right there in front of me and the keywords are powerful and dynamic. So if you've made it this far, you want to let me know you've made it this far, and you have nothing to comment, comment the word dynamic. That way I'll know you've seen the whole video. And if you do have something to comment, then maybe it's fun to implement the word dynamic into your comment, and I'll know too. So if you like this, stick around, because I'm going to link another video that you'll probably enjoy as well in the screen. And either way, I'll see you all next week. Bye. Thank you.